Hey guys, my name is Jeff Rojas and I'm a professional portrait and fashion photographer based out of New York City. And you're watching the third installment of a crash course introduction to color management. Today we're going to discuss the process of color managing while editing. Color management doesn't just stop at the studio. Remember that color management is the process of having consistent color from the time that you take your photograph until the time that you deliver your file. So editing shouldn't be any different. We need to make sure that the editing process or during the editing process, our colors aren't shifting. And how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need to figure out is what your working environment looks like. Where are you editing? What does the light look like in the room that you're editing in? All those are important factors into color management. As I mentioned in the introduction to color management video, in an ideal world, you would match the lighting during the editing process in the same lighting condition that you're shooting in. From there, you wanna make sure that you're choosing the correct color space. In the introduction to color management, I mentioned what color spaces are and where they came from. So if you remember that video, I mentioned that there's two primary color spaces you're gonna be working in sRGB and Adobe RGB. Now, if you're photographing things in RAW, which you should be, your images are importing into Lightroom in a color space called Profoto RGB. Profoto RGB covers about 90% of the visible spectrum available to the human eye, which means that it has the most amount of color to work with, which sounds great in theory, but it's not always the best solution for color management. Now, remember that color management is the process of making sure that you have consistency in color from the time you take your photograph until the time you deliver your file. Now, if you're a photographer who doesn't print, there's really no benefit from working with extra colors. So if you're looking for an accurate representation of what your final image is going to look like, stick to using sRGB, plain and simple. Now, if you're printing, the Adobe RGB color space is going to have more colors in common with the CMYK color space, which means that there's going to be less shifts in color when you switch over to the CMYK color space. Now, the cool part about Adobe RGB is once you make that decision, you can make a second file and uh, keep one at sRGB, which means that you have two separate files, one for printing and one for electronic use. One of the most overlooked parts of photo editing is your monitor, which is ironic because this is what you spend hours of your time staring at. So the first thing you wanna do is calibrate your monitor. Calibrating your monitor means that you're making sure reds are displaying as red, blues are displaying as blue, and so on. Because the colors being displayed by monitors shift over time, you want to plan to calibrate your monitor at least once a month. How? Well, you need to invest in a colorometer. Now, a colorometer is a device that measures the colors that are being displayed by your screen, measures them according to what's being displayed versus what the computer is trying to tell the display, and readjusts for what the colors that the computer itself is trying to tell the monitor. There's a difference between the two of them. The colorometer is going to calibrate your screen to adjust for what your computer is trying to tell it. Now, while you can purchase an external colorometer from a variety of different manufacturers, like the x right Color Monkey and the Data Color Spider, monitors like the CG248 have a built-in colorometer. That means that the software and the hardware are going to match, which means greater color accuracy. Now, regardless of which route you choose, built-in or external, invest in a colorometer. Now, aside from simple color calibration, most of you have very awkward viewing angles, meaning your monitor is a little too high or a little too low, and that's gonna go ahead and change the way that you perceive colors. Now, the brightness and contrast of your image can change depending on the angle of the monitor itself. Because of the way that screens are engineered, many LCDs will darken an image when you're looking at them from a lower angle. And if you move them too high, the colors are going to slightly shift. The same goes for left or right. If you want to see the recommended viewing angle for your specific screen, be sure to read the owner's manual. To save us about an hour long conversation about science behind luminance and gamma, I'm just going to provide you guys with these numbers. Ideally, your gamma should be set at 2.2 and your luminance should be set somewhere between 100 and 150, depending on how bright or dark your working environment is. No more, no less. Now, those are generally the two recommended settings on monitors for editing. Any more or less than those numbers and you risk having your images look too light or too dark. So, in short, in an ideal world, you want to edit your photos in the same lighting conditions that you took your photos in. 
you want to be sure that your monitor is calibrated. You want to be sure that you're editing in the same color space you plan on exporting in. You want to make sure that your monitor is positioned at the right viewing angle. Your gamma should be set at 2.2. Your monitor luminance should be set somewhere in between 100 and 150. And finally, you should be exporting in the same exact color profile you were editing in throughout the whole process. Each of those steps is gonna ensure that your edited images match from the time you import your images until the time you're delivering your file. And that's it. We can literally, like I said before, spend hours spending time on this in a scientific way and just keep it short and sweet. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And if you guys enjoyed this video and you're watching it on Facebook, please share it with your friends. And if you're watching it on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Now, until next time, you guys have a great day.